ay ang Myla Joy Sikantoha, first year nursing student at Central Mindanao University. And today I am going to demonstrate a procedure called assessing brachial artery blood pressure. And before we can proceed with the procedure, we're going to do an assessment which is to assess the patient's blood pressure. And we have possible nursing diagnosis like the hypertension and the hypotension. The materials needed for this procedure are stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer inside. So since we're all set, let us now start the procedure. Procedure number one, check for physician's order or nursing care plan for frequency of blood pressure measurement. More frequent measurement may be appropriate based on nursing judgment. So you need to do this to provide proper intervention and uh, medication to the right patient. I'm going to see it here. Okay. Procedure number two is to perform hand hygiene. This is to prevent contamination. Procedure number three is to identify the patient. You need to identify the patient to provide proper intervention and the right intervention to the right patient. Procedure number four is to close all the curtains if available and uh, the door if possible so that it can provide privacy for the patient and also, you need to um, tell the patient the procedure, what you're going to do, and assess her capabilities and how she can help you perform the activity. This is to uh, this is to have a good relationship between your patient and a good report. And also, this is to build a comfortable atmosphere between you and the patient. So, for procedure number five, you need to put on gloves. This is to prevent contamination. Putting your gloves, you can adjust it. So here and the other side. And for procedure number six, you need to select the arm that you're going to assess. So we're gonna use the left hand in measuring his blood pressure. For the procedure number seven, so you need to have the patient assume a comfortable sitting or lying position. So with the forearm supported by the level of the heart and the palm of the hand upward. And now if the patient is lying down, you can support their arms with a uh, pillow. And since the patient is sitting down, uh, you have the patient sit back in the chair so that the chair supports his or her back. So in addition to that, make sure the patient keeps the legs uncrossed. So you, you need to take note of that. By following these steps, it ensures the patient's comfort and a, uh, appropriate test result. So now we're going to proceed with the procedure number eight. Expose the brachial artery by removing garments or move a sleeve if it is too tight above the area where the cuff will be placed. So since my patient is wearing a t-shirt, it would be easier to expose the brachial area. This is to ensure accuracy in the patient's result. For procedure number nine, you need to palpate the location of the brachial artery, center of the bladder of or the cuff over the brachial artery, about the midway on the arm so that the lower edge of the cuff is about two to five to five centimeters above or one to two inches above or the inner aspect of the elbow. Line the artery marking on the cuff off with the patient's brachial artery. The tubing should extend from the edge of the cuff near the patient's elbow. This is to ensure that we did the proper procedure to get an accurate result of her blood pressure. You need to wrap the cuff on the arms. Tighten it and fasten it. Make sure that no garment should be stuck on the cuff. This is to ensure a proper recording.
And after that, you need to check the needle if it is in the zero. On E. Yeah, it is on the zero. And Sorry for the sudden change of setup, but now we're going to continue with our procedure, which is estimating systolic pressure. So you need to palpate the pulse at the brachial or the radial artery by pressing your fingertips gently. This is to locate the pulse for the testing of the blood pressure of the patient. So we're going to choose the radial artery, which is located here. So for the next step, you need to tighten the screw bulb on the air pump. This is to allow the air to stay at the area of the cup. And it will make your cup easier. The next step would be is to inflate the cuff while continuing to palpate the artery. And you need to note on the point on the gauge where the pulse disappears. So this is the um, estimated systolic pressure. So now we're going to inflate it. You need to do it gently to avoid discomfort for the patient. And now we got it. Now we're deflating it. So the Estimated systolic pressure is at 80. Later on, as you do the process in getting your the blood pressure of the patient, you will add uh, 30 mmHg. So it means that 80 plus 30, you will stop at 110. Later on, as you do the getting of the blood pressure. So now we're going to wait for one minute to as we deflate it, and we're already done. So we're now going to proceed with the obtaining blood pressure measurement features are you need to assume a position not uh, away from the gauge three meters uh, this is to ensure accuracy on the result and it will be appropriate and the next one would be place the stethoscope in ear place in your ears and direct the ear pierce forward into the canal and not against the ear itself so this is to hear the palpitations properly when you insert the diaphragm here so place the bell or the diaphragm of the stethoscope firmly but with as little pressure as possible over the brachial artery which we found a while ago which is located here and do not allow the stethoscope to touch the clothing or the cuff this is to hear the palpitations properly so you can use the bell or the diaphragm but i will use the diaphragm since I'm used to using this. The next step would be, now we're going to pump. Make sure that the ball is up. Now we're going to pump. This is, you need to have a 30 mmHg allowance. And after that, you need to note the point on the gauge at which the first faint but clear sound appears. This is the systolic pressure. And note the last pump is the diastolic pressure. Release. And now we have 100 over 60. As 100 as the, the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure is the 60. Since we already got the measurement, we, you need to remove the other cuff. Okay. Possible. And now you will remove now your gloves and perform a hand hygiene. If you wear PPE or other stuff, you need to remove it now. And for the last stage, you need to clean the diaphragm of the stethoscope that you use. This is to prevent contamination and so that the next user won't be at risk of any thing that can contaminate them. And 
dispose the alcohol bag. And that ends our video for today. Thank you for watching.